Now let's make two things clear. ISIL is not Islamic. No religion condones the killing of innocents, and the vast majority of ISIL's victims have been Muslim. And ISIL is certainly not a state. What is extremism and how is it ruining Afghanistan? Why we should be concerned with extremism's growth? Where does religious radicalism come from and what causes it? The term is primarily used in a political or religious sense to refer to an ideology that is concerned to be far outside the mainstream attitudes of society and it usually comes with lots of violence. Extremists' views are typically contrasted with those of moderates. In Western countries, for example, in contemporary discourse on Islam or on Islamic political movements, the distinction between extremists and moderate Muslims is commonly stressed. And it's our video's topic today, Islamic extremism, which is completely opposed with what the real Islam is. So let's get down to it. It might not be a mystery, but it's necessary to talk about it. Please hit that like button, subscribe if you like our content, hit that notification bell to be notified every time we post a video. With all that being said, let's dive into the mystery world, shall we? Religious extremism is a deviation from the views and practices of religious moderation and the shift towards an extremism interpretation of religious teachings. An interpretation that is often accompanied by intolerance, discrimination and calls for violence. Extremists can be individuals or parties. They are usually so much different in behaviors, actions and thoughts, especially ideological thoughts. And it gets bolder when it comes to relations between individuals and groups of moderates and extremists and their interactions with each other in their social and political environments. And it draws lots of attention which is mostly negative to itself when extremists have the power. Which in this case, ISIS or Taliban are a good example. Now, Taliban are a little milder than ISIS, but it doesn't clear the fact that they have extremist thoughts, which is not good for Islam's view outside the box. Because as said earlier, extremism is in opposition with what Islam really says. The origin of extremism in Afghanistan. So, first of all, let's have a look at Taliban's history. During 1970 and 1980s, several alliances were formed by the name of Mujahids, which in Arabic means the soldiers who fight for their religion. These alliances were formed in order to fight against the Soviet soldiers inside Afghanistan who were supporting the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan. They were supported by the United States of America, Western Europe, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and countries around Persian Gulf, especially Iran, which finally in 1989 forced the Soviet force to flee out of Afghanistan and in 1992 caused the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan to be overthrown. And after what seemed like a victory for Mujahids, something predictable happened. The Mujahid groups, big and small, started fighting against each other over the reign. Most of these wars were ethnic and sectarian wars that were justified and created on the basis of religious differences. The war led to a group of fundamentalists standing up to the Mujahids under the name of the Taliban with fundamentalist views as a way to gain control and rule over Afghanistan. The reasoning of defeating atheist aggressors and also quelling the violence of civil wars led some to turn to jihadists and Taliban's ideology. Until 2001, 11th of September, the sorrowful coordinated terroristic attacks by the Wahhabi so-called Islamist Al-Qaeda which was led by Osama bin Laden. And obviously, United States severely wanted to get their hands on Osama bin Laden and neutralize him. So United States officially told Taliban to hand Osama bin Laden over, but they denied. Hence why United States decided to take action and get it done themselves. So in May 2nd, 2011, shortly after 1 a.m. local time, Osama bin Laden got killed by the SEAL Team 6. Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda, and a terrorist who's responsible for the murder of thousands 
of innocent men, women, and children. His death caused Taliban to be faded too, but some years later, in 2006, Taliban declared their existence again and opposed the sovereignty of Afghanistan and penetrated most of the southern parts of Afghanistan. And after two years, began to advance towards the capital. Now, let's take a look at Taliban's thoughts and what they want. Are Taliban's really Muslims? Takfiri politics or takfir vision is in conflict with Islam. Takfir in Arabic means accusing another Muslim of apostasy, meaning not being a true Muslim. It is clearly stated in Islamic principles that anyone who commits crimes in the name of Islam is the enemy of Islam. And whoever kills innocent people is a sinner according to Islam. So these sentences clarify the fact that what Taliban do or groups like ISIS used to do is not what Islam has said. These groups want to control people and want to run their governments and state how they want. And they justify their actions with using misunderstandings of Quran verses. And they say it in a way that justifies their actions. In this verse, God clearly warns people against extremism in religion and considers it as a prelude to misguidance and following a misguided and deviant group. Because they surely just care about their own interests. It is clear that the actions, behaviors of the takfiri and terrorist organizations and movements that have been armed against the fate of Muslims in the guise of religion and in the name of Allah and Islam. So they're clearly against the message and order of the Holy Quran. By doing so, they deny one of the most important commands of God in the Holy Quran. And in this way, they deviate themselves from the religion and mislead a large number of people. But still, there is an important question here. Is extremism only in Islam? Are other religions immune from extremism? Well, there is a negative answer. The Crusades are a clear example of extremism in Christianity, with up to 10 million casualties, but obviously it opposes the Christianity's reality. Or Israel's policies towards the people of Gaza and Palestine can be seen as an example of extremism in Judaism, but surely the real Jewish are against these thoughts. And the Taliban, ISIS, or groups like these are all clear examples of extremisms in Islam. I mean, let's take a look at some of these ridiculous laws and rules that Taliban has made. Watching television is haram. Making or keeping in a statue is haram. Girls are really restricted. For example, they can't go to school or they can't go to gym. And men can't shave their beard. I mean, it wouldn't be a problem if they could look like this. But instead, they should look like this. I mean, come on, someone show me a sign that Islam said these somewhere. But instead, I know Islam has advised people to always look and smell good. Also, it is stated that education is really important and it's even more important than praying. I mean, come on, man. I mean, uh, judge yourself. I won't say no more. Just take a look at them, man. I hope they don't behead me tonight. I will go to hell for laughing at this. Now, add to all this the project of Islamophobia, which is being run by the enemies of Islam and it is being carried out by seemingly so called Muslim people. And well, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and hit that notification bell to get notified every time we post a video. I mean, how much time would it take, bro? Come on, do it. Taliban made me angry enough. Oh, I forgot about one of the rules that Taliban just has made. A breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't subscribe, you will find one of these under your bed. Uh, I hope it was funny.
See you in the next mystery.